Hey guys, so today I thought that I would film a non-beauty favourites video. Um, I'm going to have a special guest at the end who is my flatmate because one of the things that is my favourite this month is something that he's actually made. Um, so yeah, let's get straight in. So the first thing I have to show you, which I also mentioned in my um, health and fitness video, is the Lean In 15 cookbook by Joe Wicks. So it looks like this, you can see I've bookmarked a load of pages. Now, um, as you know, I tend to follow kind of body coach rules for um, my health and fitness routine. Obviously I'm unable to do sort of HIIT training right now, I'm focusing more on yoga and Pilates as I said in my previous video. Um, but I've just found that whereas I know a lot of the recipes from the first time I attempted to do the body coach 90 day plan, I know them off my heart and they're really easy to do but I tend to cook the same three or four because the other ones don't appeal to me. So having this book as a bit of a guide um, as to some more ideas and it's kind of, you know, measured out for you and all that kind of stuff has been really, really nice. So we've done the Joe's chicken pie. Um, we've done the kind of chorizo and egg tomato bake, which was really nice. We've done a couple of the salads. We've done the curry that's in there. And you know, it's all stuff that you can kind of swap out for vegetarian alternatives if you want to. So you could swap out the chicken or the fish or whatever for like corn pieces or something like that. So it's kind of like interchangeable. You can swap the meats in and out as well a little bit. It gives you some options. And it's just been really nice, especially because um, the way we set it up is that Andy does all of the washing up and I do all of the cooking because I love to cook and I hate to wash up and he doesn't mind, he gets it cooked for him. So especially as I have to feed Andy and he's way less fussy than I am, but I equally don't want to not be getting some variety in our diet. So having this on hand has been really, really good this month. The next thing I have to show you is actually a diary. So as you guys know, I've been um, having some therapy sessions lately, um, also occasionally some physio and kind of trying to keep track of when I'm working out, when I'm working and, and a bit more about, you know, what income I've got coming in and when I've worked and when I haven't and all that kind of stuff. So I've never been particularly organised where that's concerned. This year I thought it's going to be different. Now I might fall down, I might fall behind a, a couple of days and like have forgotten to fill it in what I've done that day or whatever. But especially as I'm up in London and, you know, a lot of my friends are still down in Hampshire it's good to know when I've last seen everybody and what I've got coming up and rather than me trying to remember with all the other appointments and stuff that I've had lately. So this is my Kate Spade 2016 planner diary. So this also has a notes page in the front where I have written my 2016 goals. If any of you are really clever, then you'll probably be pausing this right now and trying to read them, which is fine by me. Um, just things like just things like spending more time with my family, making more of an effort to call my grandparents, you know, that kind of stuff. Getting out and seeing more galleries, because a lot of this stuff is free in London, and if I'm here, I feel like I should be making the most of it. So, this has been helping me plan my life. And it's really pretty, like, I love the gold. So, the next thing I'm actually going to show you is a tea. This is the Twinings Invigorating Peppermint Tea. I really like Twinings as a brand. It's readily available, it's really easy to pick up. Um, another really good brand of tea that I like but it's slightly more expensive is the Tea Pigs one and I haven't actually tried the peppermint version of, of the Tea Pigs one but this is the Twinings version and they're kind of, they're just a nice peppermint tea bag basically. They're the kind of paper ones so it's nothing fancy. I tend to just kind of bung it in, pour hot water over, put like that much cold over the top as well and then just kind of leave the tea bag in. And it's nice and minty, it's really refreshing. I know it also helps with your digestion and stuff. And so I tend to have it like just before I've had a meal or just after I've had a meal. And I actually really like it in the morning now instead of having my usual like regular breakfast tea. So the next thing that I have to show you are both, well, two things. Um, they're both to do with kind of arts and crafts. So if you follow me on Instagram, which I hope you do, and if you don't, then all of my links are below, then you will have seen that I've been into drawing things lately. So I've been experimenting with charcoal. I've always been quite handy with a pencil. I did art for GCSE and then I kind of just stopped. I think work life got in the way or rather I allowed it to just like I kind of did with my reading really. Um, and recently Andy, my flatmate, he's been kind of encouraging us both to just like take a little bit of time out and we'll sit there and we'll draw for an afternoon. 
And I've been experimenting with charcoals, but also found some wonderful coloured pencils. They are really expensive. I actually got these coloured pencils like on a really, really good sale. Um, so I'm going to share with you the coloured ones first. So these are the Prismacolor Premier um, coloured pencils and smooth rich colour lay down and these are really blendable which is what I was surprised about. So I have the, um, my auntie lent me her Caran Dash ones which is a Swiss brand, forgive my pronunciation if that's wrong for any of you who know the brand, um, when I was doing my GCS GCSEs and I really like those but I still found them quite difficult to blend whereas these they lay down and they're quite a I don't want to say crumbly, crumbly is the wrong word, but they're a really smooth, soft pencil, which makes it really easy to kind of blend colours and layer colours, which makes it much nicer when you're trying to kind of really achieve like highlights and shadows and all those kinds of things. So I've been really enjoying these. I believe there are 40, yeah, 48 in here. They do bigger packs. Um, I believe this 48 pack full price is about £130. I know that is crazy. Um, I've been using them like crazy however, um, but I got them on sale from Amazon for £39.99 which is a huge saving and actually I think these might just be a little bit better than the Caran Dash ones and I think these are slightly cheaper, I could be wrong. Um, so yeah, if you're really into your kind of coloured pencil sketches or anything like that then I would check those out. And the next thing I have to show you are the tinted charcoal pencils that I've been using. So these are the tinted um, charcoal, it's a 24 pack and this is by the brand Derwent. I've been using quite a lot of Derwent tools so I tend to buy a lot of their sharpeners. They've got a couple of really good like handy kind of eraser pens and things. Um, because when you're working with charcoal, although I'm quite new to it, I find that taking out highlights with an eraser is actually a really good way to kind of just makes your image pop a little bit more. Um, I haven't actually used any of the sort of browns and neutrally greeny sort of bluey colours in here. I've just been using the black and white but Andy has done and he did a really cool kind of candle image um, on brown paper which worked out in sort of like use the white for highlights and kind of the peachy colour and um, just been really enjoying these really. I think if you've if you've always enjoyed sketching and you haven't tried charcoal yet, as much as I felt like I was always pretty decent with a pencil, like a regular, like an HB or something, um, I actually think that once you get used to the fact that charcoal moves um, and it smudges, it's actually a lot quicker to get really cool effects with it. So if you're really into your sketching and stuff too, I'd definitely see if you can get your hands on some really nice smooth coloured pencils. Um, the Prismacolor ones are amazing and also try the charcoals as well. Uh, the Derwent ones I think I paid just under £30 for them and there are 24 in here so these are actually really reasonably priced. I would recommend also if you're going to get the um, charcoal pencils of any kind they do you know like half boxes and they do just the black and white set that comes with kind of an eraser and all that kind of stuff as well. Um, I would definitely get the blending stumps which you can um, you can get in a pack of three that tend to come in like two or three different sizes just for blending out edges and things I highly recommend you look into that as well. Um, just to show you what I've been doing lately I'm going to show you a few of the pictures that I've done. Um, so this is my rabbit. Um, so me and Andy have been sort of sat on the sofa and we take it in turns to pick an image so he has a degree in architecture um, so his his drawings are probably technically much better than mine. I have more of a soft, blended out feel. He's very good at line work and he's he's just brilliant at everything, to be honest. It's really irritating. So we pick the same image and then we just kind of, we kind of turn it into our own version and then kind of compare afterwards. Quite an interesting way of working. Um, so this is my white rabbit um, inspired by Alice in Wonderland. Unfortunately, his arm was meant to go out here with the, with the little trumpet and the flag. But because I totally messed up the kind of the page composition, I ended up having to add his arm in down here and kind of make him hold it down low. So I hope that kind of works. I feel like the proportions are actually all right. This was my first ever attempt at charcoal. It is an eye. It's not finished yet. I have, I'm have i missing all of the bottom lashes. And obviously with charcoal, the paper you use is different as well. So... Um, this is quite a textured paper. Andy did this 
on quite a smooth paper and his kind of looks almost like photo it kind of looks yeah it kind of looks like a photo mine looks more like a sketch i would say and it's not finished yet as i've said we're missing some eyelashes and some shading and stuff um, and the last thing i'm going to show you is the cheshire cat from alice in wonderland can you see a theme here um so these are the prisma color pencils my first time trying to use them um and in the nose as well and then actually what i've done is i've just used some black colored pencil um, from my prisma color ones and actually the rest is just a mixture of different hardnesses of charcoal um so i kind of mixed the mediums there which i think is quite cool i also am working on a mad hatter right now um in full color which i think could be really cool um so yeah so the final thing that I'm going to talk to you about today, um, which involves my special guest, I'll get him out in a minute, um, is a film by Andy, my flatmate. Now he directed this film and it's called Touch. And I think it's, it's quite a, I find it quite emotional to watch. Um, it's quite short, as most short films are. Um, but it's really, it kind of really has an impact. Um, it does contain scenes of domestic abuse, so if you are a younger viewer, I would suggest you don't watch it. Um, but for those of you that are interested in directing or filmmaking or, you know, you're studying that kind of stuff at university, it might be worth taking a look. And if you if you like the look of it too, I'm really proud of what you've done, then um, feel free to like it. I know he's got a Vimeo account and he'll have Twitter and all that kind of stuff up as well. So I will... Um, give you all of the links and things to go follow him and check it out down below as well. So I'm gonna get him in now so that we can ask him some questions and he can explain to you a little bit about his film and what the inspiration was behind it and all that good stuff. So this is my flatmate Andy and he's going to talk to you a little bit about his new short film, Touch. Um, Touch is a silent film following the relationship of a young couple as their desire to be and more connected with each other leads to both constructive, beautiful moments of bliss, but also increasingly more destructive behaviour. Okay, so how long did it take to film and what was your budget? Um, well, this was shot on, I think we had about £400 to shoot. Uh, we shot in a day. Um, the actor, Craig, our, our leading man, uh, actually had an opening night of Hamlet that night so we had I think we had six and a half hours of actual shooting time oh, yeah yeah, yeah it's like really really I tight know yeah know. super tight shooting time uh, and in that in that time we got in I built the set well kind of dressed dressed the rooms we were using a friend's house and um, so dressed up the rooms dressed up the second room during the lunch break and we shot for about I guess about five hours of actual shooting mm -hmm. So yeah, very quick. So what was the inspiration behind this piece? Uh, well, the inspiration was uh, I'd just finished an acting course and uh, a lot of what was happening was in Meisner technique uh, for anyone out there who's uh, familiar with Stanislavski. Um, what what was happening in the, in the beginning of this course was a lot of people just trying to break down all those inhibitions that we build up, those kind of habits that we have of that prevents us from communicating in a more clean, pure way. Um, but it's kind of all the defense mechanisms that people have to protect themselves in the, in the everyday outside world, really. Um, and it was just really interesting watching as these partners would stand up on stage and you'd see all the thousands of different ways that these people, desperate to actually connect with each other, would find to avoid that connection because it's that it's that weird thing when when we really want something so desperately it's also the thing we fear most because we fear not achieving it not getting it and it was just fascinating for me to kind of sit and watch and and see the 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 one motivation which is this kind of motivation of fear of not getting what they want causing thousands of different behaviors um and it just kind of occurred to me that this happens an awful lot in real life as well um, and the obvious example which I use in the film is is when you're having a fight with your lover and what you really want 
is for them to say it's okay I still love you and come over and give you a big smoochy kiss and a hug um, but the behavior you you're giving off at that moment is screaming shouty get out of my face get out of my house I never want to see you again um, which is kind of the opposing it's the opposite of what you really want to happen but the behavior you give causes you know causes something very different so I found that really fascinating how this kind of duality of how that one motivation of wanting to be wanting someone to come and give you a hug can cause getting someone to you know come here and give me a hug oh. mm. or or screamy shouty get out of my face um, and it's just that little filter that little twist of, of adding that element of fear of self-doubt whatever it is that kind of illusion that we we put in where the mind kicks in just trying to find um, a way of expressing that and f for me to explore it really um, to, so yeah that's that was kind of the, the inspiration behind the film so is there anything else that these guys can actually do for you like social media wise to help you out uh, well yeah definitely if um, if you can click on the film there's a YouTube it's on YouTube and Vimeo now uh, click on it watch it if you like it click the like button the thumbs up you type thing and um, and yeah if you can share it that would be even better yeah. Okay, so um, I will obviously leave all of Andy's kind of social media links and link to the film and all that kind of stuff, the, the official website, all that good stuff down below for you. Um, and yeah, if you're new here, hello. Subscribe if you like it, give us a thumbs up if you like the video, and I will see you in the next one. Okay, bye. Bye. Yeah. Yeah? Night. <laughs> Do you want to say that again? Because I was looking off out. <laughs> <laughs> Just looking at rainbows out there. I'll say it window. again, but only because you're pretty. Thank you. Okay. Mm. Hi. <laughs> okay. Do the face. <laughs> Do the Kira Knightley face. I would never show that on here though, because I'll get no? a load of comments. If it's not Maggie from fucking Walking Dead, it's Kira Knightley face. I think we should do the Kira Knightley face. <laughs> Ready? Night. Stop it! You're such an a-hole! Yeah. Ready? I will leave that bit in and you look like a creeper. Check it out. <laughs> Stop it. Okay.